Over the previous few lectures, we spent a bit of time moving from schema first to code first, using GraphQL Nexus decorators and TypeScript to define some syntax, which is going to eventually generate this schema. And we've almost created our schema that we had before. The final thing we're missing is going to be the mutation type, and that's what we're going to do now. So far we've been using this new library, GraphQL Nexus, Nexus Decorators, and it's been working pretty well so far. I really like the decorator and class syntax. We can see here this is still a work in progress and a prototype, and for that reason there are some things that are not working as you might expect. One of the things I couldn't get working was this mutation field syntax. I would really like to use this, but I couldn't get it to work. So what I'm going to do instead is show you the alternative and the current recommended syntax, which is going to be this mutation field syntax. Instead of using a class, it's going to use objects and it works just fine. So I'm going to show you this. So let's go ahead and see how we can use this mutation field syntax to define our mutation. In the future, if I do get this one working, I'll probably make an update and show you how it works. But I think this one is just fine for now as well. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to need to do is create a new file called mutation.ts. And this is where we're going to define our mutation. Let's go ahead and do that. The way they recommend doing this with the object syntax is to create a new object or a new, uh, a new object for each of your mutations. In this case, I'm going to call my one create book and it's going to be equal to a mutation field. The first argument is going to be the name of the mutation, which is going to be uh, create book. And the second argument is going to be an object of options. The first thing we're going to go ahead and define is the type, and this is going to be the return type. It's going to be a non-null type and it is going to be a book. You can see there's no completion here right now, but we will get completion in just a moment. The next thing we're going to need to define is the arguments, and this is going to be the input to the mutation. In our case, we're just going to have one, which is going to be the book input, and it's going to be the title of the book. So let's go ahead and define that. It is going to be an input type, it is going to be non-null, and it is going to be an input object type. You can see this syntax is a little bit verbose, which is why I prefer the TypeScript decorators and class syntax, but this is going to work just fine for now. Anyway, now we've defined this, we need to pass a few options into here as well. The first one is going to be the name, and I'm going to call my one book input. It's exactly what we called it before. The second one is going to be the options that we need to uh, pass into this, and that's going to be under the definition, I believe, and it takes an argument of t. Inside of here, we're going to define all of the, the options for this input. We're only going to have one, which is going to be the title, so we just need to say t string, and then pass in the name, which is going to be the title. The final thing we're going to need here is our resolver, so we know what to actually do with this mutation. It's going to take three arguments, the first one we don't care about, the second one is going to be the arguments, and the third one is going to be the context. And you can see we're not getting any completion here. These are both going to be any types, and I'm going to show you how to get completion right now. For example, we're expecting to return a book from this, a non-null book, and we're not getting an error right now, and we really should be. What we need to do is go ahead and generate our schema again. So the first thing we're going to do is export a new constant, and this is going to be an array called mutation, and it's going to contain all of our mutations. For now we only have one, so let's just go ahead and export the create book mutation. Let's head over to our schema file now, and we're going to import our mutation. Just go ahead and pass it in here. And finally, we're going to head back to our terminal and run yarn build schema, and it's going to create our new schema again. Now that that's been created, let's go ahead and check out our schema. If we scroll down here, you can see we are getting our mutation, so that is working correctly. If we now head back to our mutation file, you can see we still haven't got any completion. This is still an any type, and so is this one. We've touched on one of our code generation files so far, and that's this one here, schema.graphql, and this is where our GraphQL schema goes. What we haven't touched on is the other one, the type gen file, gen slash nexus gen ts, and this is where all the type definitions are going to go. So what we need to do is head over here and check out our generated file. You can see this has all of our type definitions here. And this is how GraphQL Nexus is going to do the inference for us. It's going to generate all of these types, and you can see now I've opened this file, we are getting the errors here. What I think was happening was VS Code was using the old version of this, and when I opened the new file, it reloaded the cache, and now it realizes we have types based on this input type, and now we're getting the correct types down here. You can see input has a title of a string, and context is going to be a context type. So the key here is to make sure you have your generated code open all the time, so you have the latest uh, return types on your, on your functions. 
Now that we have that, we can go ahead and continue with this. This is a lot of information. I'll talk more about the code gen later on, but just for now, let's uh, keep on going and get it working. What this needs to do is create a new book and pass it into our array of books. And we currently haven't actually got anywhere to store those books. If we head over to app, we can see here, we're just returning an array of new books here. We need some way to update this array. There are a few different options here. What I'm going to do here is change where I'm storing the books. I'm going to head over to my context and actually store my books on the top level here, just to get something working. So we're going to have an array of books, which is going to be empty by default. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and update our app. And what I'm going to do is pass in the context as the very first argument. If we head into app now and create a new constructor, we're going to have access to the context. And I'm just going to say a private context is a context type. This is going to assign it to a class prototype or a class property so I can easily access the context. Finally, we'll jump down here and update this. Instead of returning a new array, we're going to return this .context.books. And that's going to give us access to all of our books. Now we're going to have to go ahead and update these and that is going to be fairly easy. What I'd like to do is create a new book and pass it into my context. Just before we do that, we're going to update books as well. At the moment, we're hard coding both of these values and I'd like these to be dynamic and we can change them. So we're going to create a constructor here, which is going to take two arguments. We're going to have a private ID of a string and we're going to have a private ID or a private title, which is also going to be a string. And this is just going to let us pass those in when we create a new book. Finally, we're going to jump down here and return this.id. And for the second one, we're going to return this.title. And that's going to give us the correct ID and title. Finally, now we've done that, we can head back to our, our resolver and fix this one up. What we're going to do is first create a new book here. So I'm going to say const book is equal to a new book. And we're going to pass in our arguments here. The second one's obviously going to be the title. So let's go ahead and pass that in args.input.title. And the first one is going to be the ID. So we're going to have to figure out what that's going to be. We're going to use the same logic as before, which is just going to be this.context. Uh, let's go ahead and just say context.books. We are getting the correct completion there now. And we're going to grab the current length, and then we're just going to increase it by one. And this is just going to become a string, and that is going to be our new ID. Finally, we're going to say context.books.push and push in our new book. We're still getting an error here. That's because we're not returning a book and we should be returning a book. So let's go ahead and return our book. And we can see that is now working correctly. We have no typing errors here. And if we did everything correctly, we should actually be able to update our book state correctly. So let's go ahead and give this one a try. If I head back to my graphical interface, we can see we currently have no books because it looks like my server has completely crashed. I'm getting an error here. I'm just going to restart that one and hopefully it's going to work now. Yep, we're getting no books. And if we did everything correctly, we should be able to go ahead and create a new mutation. It's going to be a create book type. Let me just refresh that page. And there we go, create book. The input is going to have a single argument, which is going to be the title. And I'm just going to say title two. And this should return my new book ID and title. Let's go ahead and run this. And we can see our new book is coming back. And that is now working correctly. And we've created two books. This was a lot of information. Just to confirm what's going on here, when we create our schema, we're going to generate two files, our GraphQL schema, as well as our Nexus types. And the purpose of this one is to give us better type completion, as you saw over here when we created our mutation type. We've also seen two, way to, two ways to define Nexus types. We've seen the classic object syntax. This is the current one you can use in production. It's been battle tested for a long time and it works great. We've also seen the new kind of more concise object uh, or the rather the, the decorated syntax with classes. Both of these do work fine. If you are looking to use something in production, you probably want to use the battle tested stuff over here. But if you're just learning this stuff and you'd like to try it out, I definitely recommend checking out the object decorator syntax as well, because I find it much more concise and much more expressive. Anyway, we've managed to get a fully type safe backend by this point. There are some more improvements we can make to make this even more type safe. But instead of doing that, what we're going to do is move on to the front end and see how we can integrate this all together and get type safety right from the back end all the way through to the front end.